So today is a day after New Year's, and traditionally this is a time to set New Year's resolutions. But a way, a way to work with a resolution is by setting intentions. As humans, we're constantly growing, we're constantly changing, and sometimes we set goals for ourselves that we think we need to do or to better ourselves. But as we align with what we truly want and desire with our values and the kind of humans we want to be, it depends on a lot of factors that occur on the outside. But as you tune into your inside, that's where intentions come from. And as you work with your intentions, and this particular time of year is the sun is in Capricorn, and Capricorn is that elder that is grounded and wants to know, is this going to grow corn? Meaning, is this going to sustain for the next seven generations? How is this decision going to impact the future? And when we're working with, working with this idea, we might run into self-imposed limitations, thoughts that are holding us back. And so today's practice, I'd like to theme of what, what sort of limiting beliefs do, do we hold that might be stopping our progress towards our intentions? So I'm going to go ahead and choose, you can, you can choose a, a theme for yourself, a um, personal intention, but I'm going to choose the mantra, to let go. And so as I move forward, as I breathe in, I breathe out, I am letting go of limiting beliefs. So something to that effect. So as you're breathing in, you're breathing in your intention, your hope, the light, your desires, your wishes. And then as you're breathing out, you're breathing out whatever that is, that thought that might be sticky and limiting. So as we work with the energy of Capricorn, with the sun, which is centered in your heart. So let's go ahead and start out in all fours, hands and knees. with your palms underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And first, just notice your neutral spine. And start to think of that intention. For me, is trusting that things will unfold the way they need to and allowing. So as you inhale, begin to arch your heart forward, looking up, tilting your tailbone. And as you exhale, come into cat, curling your back. Exhaling out limiting beliefs, coming into child's pose. Breathing in on up into kneeling prayer, reaching your arms up and bringing your hands to your heart. And then coming to side plank, reaching your arms out, breathing through your side body. And then coming back to all fours, hands and knees. Reaching your right arm out and your left leg back for opposite arm and leg. See if you can stabilize through your core. And then as you exhale, bring your elbow and knee together. And then inhale to reach out. Coming back to all fours, hands and knees. We're going to do everything on this other side. Inhaling up for cow. Reaching your heart forward. Exhale for cat. 
Coming to child's pose. Coming up, so nearly in prayer, reaching up, exhaling hands to heart. Coming to gate on the other side, reaching your arm and your leg as if it's one straight line, breathing through your side body. Coming to all fours, hands and knees, and reaching your left arm and your right leg, opposite arm and leg, stabilizing through your core, your pelvis. Exhale to draw your knee and elbow together. Inhale to extend. Then coming back to all fours, hands and knees. And completing the same pattern at your own pace, just allowing your breath to guide you. Using this time and space to mindfully tune into your breath. As your breath is your tool, it can inform you of the spaces inside your body as you're completing the movements. It allows you to embody as yoga is an internal process. The exterior poses is not about what it looks like, but how it feels on the inside. So using your breath as a guide to how far you need to go in a pose. Or if you can create a little more challenge, knowing the difference between discomfort and pain. This is, this is the same metaphor that we use throughout our daily lives. Sometimes we have to put ourselves in uncomfortable posi positions in order to grow, but we don't want to cause unnecessary pain. And using your breath is that tool and that guide. Becoming aware of your limiting thoughts as you align with your intention. What is getting in the way of your intention? And if you ever notice that your breath is more shallow or up high on your chest, just stop and slow down and reset to tune into your breath so that you can take in a full yogic breath and bring a little awareness to your thought patterns. Let's go ahead and complete one more round on both sides. And when you've completed both the right and the left side, meet me in child's pose.
In child's pose, you may rest your forehead on the mat. Just notice your breath through your back body. And just allow this space to reset and come into the present moment. At any point in your practice, you can always come to child's pose. And tuning into your breath as you inhale, think of breathing in the light. And as you exhale, breathing out any darkness, anything that is limiting, just allowing that to recycle as it mingles with light, bringing in the light, exhaling out, limiting thoughts and beliefs. It takes the light to eliminate the dark so that it can become whole. We're going to prepare to come into our first downward facing dog, reaching your arms out to the edge of your mat, end of your mat. Begin to spread your fingers well. And placing most of the weight on the emphasis on the pads of your fingers. And then once you have that connection with your hands, you can begin to tuck your toes, start to lift your knees and raise your hips, straightening out your back as you allow your shoulders to be broad and your neck to hang. Maybe pedaling your heels. It's not necessary for your legs to be straight. But keeping your bent, knees bent will allow you to have an extended spine. And at the beginning of practice, our hamstrings tend to be tight. So taking whatever movement you need. On the next inhale, begin to look forward. And start to walk towards the front of your mat, coming into a standing forward fold. Bend your knees well so that you can rest your chest on to your thighs. And just allow your neck to hang. With each exhale, just releasing tension out your shoulders and your neck. Maybe grabbing opposite elbows. Just allowing the weight of that to release any tension. Maybe rocking side to side. Left and right, shaking your head up and down. Whatever movement feels nice to allow that release. We're going to prepare to come up into standing. On the next inhale, begin to roll up one vertebrae at a time into standing. And this is your Tadasana. This is the foundation of all your poses. So first think about your hip to knee to ankle alignment. And once you have that alignment, Connect all four corners of your feet to get that pada banda. This is gonna root and anchor your, your, all your standing poses and will be the foundation. And if you tend to invert or evert, see if you can exaggerate the other direction, just really concentrating on creating all four corners of your feet. Once you have that connection, concentrate on your mula banda. This is gonna to be towards the base of your spine and up near the perineum. It's gonna be a lifting. And as you activate this, this is gonna create a root lock and it's gonna send energy down your legs. So if you tend to be deficient in this chakra, especially 
this time collectively as we're emerging out of a period of darkness. We might be activated in some fight or flight. And so if you ever notice that you are activated, you can use the Mula Banda to really ground, connect to the earth. And this is pretty much all you would need to do in standing to have the foundation. But as we uh, travel up through the chakras, we can activate our core. And this is going to be our sense of what feels right. If so we tune into our gut, we're becoming strong and we have boundaries. The next tra travel up to your heart. Broaden your shoulders. And next, travel up to your neck. And this is going to be your Jalandara Banda. See if you can extend your neck. If you tend to reach forward, if you tend to hunch forward, you might need to exaggerate the other direction. But you have that. Inhale your arms overhead. And just imagine that you have a connection to the universe to the top of your head. This is your connection to your higher self. And then exhale, bring your hands to your brow center. This is your third eye. This is the seed of intuition and also your moon center. And next, exhaling your hands to your heart. This is your sun center. This is going to be the seat of your intention. So just tuning in to your intention to carry you through your practice. Exhaling to come to a forward fold. Inhale your heart forward. As you exhale, step to plank and hold. We're going to be here for five full breaths. So think about activating your core. This is going to stabilize you as you tune into your breath. On the next exhale, slowly lower down to your mat, resting your chest. And anchor through the tops of your feet, hugging your legs into your midline, activating your mula banda, your core. And as you inhale, begin to raise up through your heart and extend your neck long for a baby cobra. And just a small action, you're doing a lot of muscle work here, a lot of energy work. As you bring awareness, you're activating your energy centers. Exhale to lower back to your mat. And next time we come up, I'm going to, we're going to come up into a sphinx pose. So bring your forearms so that your elbows are underneath your shoulders. You're going to activate through the tops of your feet. Hugging your legs together, activating through your root and your core. And then you're going to lift through your heart and you're going to extend through your neck. It's the same action in Cobra, but you're lifted a little higher and supported through your forearms. See if you can find fluid, soft breaths. And think about the Sphinx in the middle of the desert, just watching. On the next exhale, lower to the mat and rest your, resting your cheek on one side. We're gonna come in through child's pose and find our way to downward facing dog.
From downward facing dog, inhale to extend your right leg long behind you. And as you exhale, curl your knee in towards your chest and start to step it towards your palms. And set your back knee on the mat. And we're going to come up into a low lunge, inhaling your arms overhead. Finding a neutral pelvis, an extended spine. And next we're gonna to start to warm up the hips, placing your hands on the mat. Start to rock back and forth, straightening the front leg, bending the front knee as you come forward. Using your breath to guide your pace as you start to send fluid to your knee and your hip. Next time you come forward, stop and start to wiggle your right foot out towards the edge of your mat, bringing your hands on the inside of your ankle. And this is a good place to stop as you're gonna activate your right hip. You can also come down onto your forearms. This is gonna give you more engagement. If you're coming down to your forearms, being mindful of your threshold, you can always come back up onto your palms. Breathing into your right hip. Inhale to come back up onto your palms. And we're gonna step back to downward facing dog from here. Coming into downward facing dog. Inhale to extend your left leg long behind you. As you exhale, curl your knee in towards your chest and step it towards your palms and placing that back knee down on the mat, inhaling your arms overhead, coming into a low lunge, stabilizing through your pelvis, broadening through your chest. Then exhale to place your palms on the mat. We're gonna rock back and forth Inhaling forward, exhaling back. Just allowing your breath to guide your pace of your movement as you're starting to warm up your left hip. And next time you come forward, stop and start to wiggle your left foot out towards the edge of the mat, bringing your palms on the inside of your ankle. And just checking with yourself, this is a good place to be. Or if you'd like a little more resistance, you can come down onto your forearms or your lizard pose. Breathing into your left hip. Taking full yogic breaths. And then coming back up to your palms. We're gonna step to downward facing dog from here. Coming back to downward facing dog. We'll be here for three full breaths. So taking this time to check in where you're at. On the next inhale, begin to look forward, bending your knees and step or hop towards the front of your mat. Inhaling your heart forward, exhale to fold. Inhale to stand to rise. Exhaling, hands to heart. So we're gonna start to move a little more in our sun salutations. Exhaling your arms overhead. Exhaling, forward fold. Inhale to lift your heart. And exhale to step back to plank and hold. You can always come to half plank by placing your knees on the mat. 
as you engage your core, use your breath. On the next exhale, slowly lower down to your mat, resting your chest. And we're gonna come into locus or shalambhasana from here. Inhale to lift your chest and extend your arms back. And then you can start to raise through your thighs. Create an extension through your spine. And if you have this engagement, and you want a little more challenge, you can start to bend your knees and reach for your feet. And this is gonna give you a little more lift for bow pose. Or you can always come back to Shalambhasana, locust pose. Exhale to release. And finding your way to downward facing dog from here, you can come through child's pose. From downward facing dog, inhale to extend your right leg long behind you. As you exhale, curl your knee in toward your chest and step it toward your palms. You're gonna take that back foot and pivot it so it's flat on your mat. We're gonna inhale up to warrior two. From warrior two, anchoring through all four corners of your feet, engaging through your strong legs, finding a neutral pelvis and extending through your spine, reaching through your fingertips. Exhale to reverse your warrior, reaching that right arm up towards the ceiling, looking toward your palms, breathing through your right side body. As you exhale, we're gonna come into extended side angle from here. You can rest your right arm on your leg, reaching your left arm up sideways so that there's one nice long extension from the edge of your heel on up through your fingertips. Breathing through your side body to find integrity of the shape. You can be looking either up or down, whatever feels good. And you can always stop here, or if you would like to have a little more engagement, you can find a bind. This is gonna be the next level of this pose. If you're taking the bind, making sure that you're mindful of your breath, that you're not struggling, you can always come out. And if you're having, keeping the bind, we're gonna shift into a triangle pose. Uh, maintaining that bind, see if you can create that shape by extending your front leg, or you can always come out. And we're gonna find a regular triangle from here. I'm just noticing the difference of how that feels without the bind. It's a difference between containment and expansion, restriction and expression. Sometimes we need the opposites as we move towards goals to find our balance. Exhale to cartwheel your palms towards the mat and find your way to downward facing dog. You can come to a child's pose. You can even find cobra or you can find a vinyasa or you can come straight into downward facing dog. We'll be in a downward facing dog for three full breaths. Taking this time to check in with yourself. How is your breath? On the next inhale, begin to look forward, bending your knees and step or hop towards the front of your mat. 
Inhaling your heart forward. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhaling, hands to heart. And I'm going to go to the opposite side of the mat so that I am mirroring you. Inhale, your arms overhead. Exhale to come to a forward fold. Inhale to lift your heart. Exhale to step to plank and hold. And we're gonna to transition to downward facing dog. So you can find any of these transitions. You can come into a cobra pose. You can come into sphinx. Or you can find locusts. Any of these variations will work. Or you can simply just come in a child's pose. Once you found your way to downward facing dog, inhale to extend your left leg long behind you. As you exhale, curl your knee in toward your chest and start to step it toward your palms. And setting your back foot down on the mat. As you come up into warrior two, find your engagement with your feet, your pada foundation. Finding your neutral pelvis, engagement through your core, and extension through your spine for your full warrior two. And exhale to reverse your warrior, reaching your left arm up towards the ceiling. Breathing through your left side body. We're gonna transition into extended side angle from here. On the next exhale, start to shift forward into your extended side angle. Maybe resting your left elbow on your thigh as you reach your right arm, extending out, finding that nice clean line from the edge of your ankle all the way up to your fingertips. Engaging through your side body Using your breath. If you're choosing to take a bind, you can take that. Just using your breath as a guide of how far to push yourself. A little discomfort is necessary for growth, but pain and suffering is counterproductive. So your breath is that guide to be your barometer of how far you need to push or release back up. In the bind, you're in a state of constriction. Sometimes we need a little limitation in order to focus our energy before we can start to come out and expand We're gonna shift into triangle pose from here. You can do that from the bind or you can release the bind. And then coming into regular triangle, coming in a state of expansiveness by releasing that bind. And next, we're going to cartwheel our palms towards the mat and transition to downward facing dog. Yogi's choice. You can take a vinyasa. You can come in into child's pose. Or coming into straight downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, we'll be here for three full breaths. Using this time to check in.
On your next inhale, look forward, bend your knees, and step or hop towards the front of your mat. Inhaling your heart forward, exhale to fold. Inhale, rise to stand. We're gonna begin the moon salutations. So I'm gonna go to the opposite side of the mat so that I can mirror. And so the moon salutations are the receptive part. We, and the sun salutations are the activating part. And so for intentions, you need both the sun and the moon. And right now we're in a gibbous phase of the moon. Inhale your arms overhead. Exhale to shift to your right for crescent. Inhale for center. Exhale to shift to your left. Inhale for center. Exhale to step your left foot wide along your mat, reaching your arms out for star. This is your full moon expression. Exhale for goddess. Inhale for star. Next, we're gonna shift into triangle pose, shifting your left foot towards the other end of your mat and reaching your left arm forward. Coming into triangle pose. This is your waning gibbous phase of the moon. The beginning of the gibbous and this is where we're at currently in our night sky. Next, we're gonna shift into a triangle pose from here. So you're gonna to have to mindfully shift your hips so that they are parallel to the end of your mat. Maybe hopping that back foot in slightly and creating a micro bend to that front knee. Inhale to extend your spine. As you exhale, hinging forward from your hips, finding an extended spine or pyramid. And this is included in the gibbous phase of the moon. The moon is continuing to wane and get smaller. Next, we're gonna place the palms onto the mat, placing your back knee down, coming into your quarter moon expression, inhaling your arms overhead. This is your low lunge. See if you can find a neutral pelvis, extended spine. Next, you're gonna to shift to your left for Skandasana or surfer's pose. This is your crescent phase of the moon. That last little sliver before it comes new. And you can play with different hand positions, maybe at your heart or whatever feels good. Next, shifting to the center of your mat for Malasana squat. This is your new moon expression. This is the beginning of the cycle where you can set your intention for the next 28 days. And the moon stays in a position for about two and a half days. So you can work with intentions a couple of days before or after the new moon. And same with full moons, you feel the effect a little before and a little after. Next, we're gonna to shift to Skandasana on the other side as we experience the crescent as our Moon is beginning to wax, starting to get bigger. You can play with different leverage. You can keep your hands on the ground or you can increase the load. So 
your intentions are starting to take seed. Next, we're gonna place the back knee on the mat, keeping your front knee at a 90 degree for your quarter moon expression. Inhaling your arms overhead for a low lunge. And next, placing your hands on the mat, hopping that back foot in for pyramid. Maybe creating a bend to that front knee, seeing so that your spine is in extension. as your moon is continuing to get bigger, reflecting more light of the sun. And next we're gonna hop that back foot out and coming into triangle pose. And you're ready, reaching that left arm up towards the ceiling like a clock started striking midnight. This is your gibbous phase, the waxing gibbous. See if you can find integrity through your side body to maintain the shape. And next we're gonna come into our full moon expression, mindfully coming up into star. Reaching out through your fingertips, taking up as much space as you need to for that full moon expression. Exhaling for goddess. Inhale for star. And we're gonna do everything we just did on the other side. So stepping to the other side of the mat, I'm gonna on the other side so that I can mirror. Inhaling your arms overhead. Exhale to shift your right for crescent. Inhaling for center. Exhale to shift your left for crescent. Inhale for center. As you exhale, step your right foot wide along your mat for star pose. This is your full moon expression. Exhale for goddess. Inhaling for star. The next point, the right foot towards the back of the mat. Starting to transition to triangle pose, reaching your right arm forward and then coming into triangle pose. For your gibbous phase of the moon. Next, we're gonna shift into pyramid pose from here. So mindfully shifting your hips towards the other side of the mat. So they're parallel and maybe hopping that back foot in. Inhale to extend your spine. As you exhale, begin to hinge forward from your hips, finding an extended spine for pyramid. Continuing in your gibbous phase of the moon. As your moon is continuing to wane, And next, placing that back knee down, maintaining a 90 degree on your front knee, inhaling your arms overhead for your low lunge. This is your quarter moon expression. Next, you're gonna skandasana or come into surfer's pose on your right side. This is your crescent phase. Choosing your hand placement. And 
Next, shift towards the center of your mat for a malasana squat. The beginning of a new cycle to set intentions. And next, coming into your crescent phase on the other side. Your moon is beginning to wax that first little sliver. Next, placing that back knee down on the mat, keeping your front knee at a 90 degree for your low lunge, inhaling your arms overhead. This is your waxing crescent phase. And next we're gonna to come to pyramid from the ground up, placing your palms on the mat, popping that back foot in for your pyramid expression. Maybe having a slight bend to that front knee so that your spine can be extended. And next hopping that back foot out, coming into a triangle pose from the ground up, reaching that right arm up towards the sky, the clock striking midnight for your gibbous phase expression. And next coming up into star. Reaching your arms out for that full moon expression and completion of a, another cycle, a release of emotions, a fullness or culmination. Exhale for goddess. Inhale for star. And we're gonna come into a wide leg forward fold. Start to place your hands on your hips. As you inhale, begin to extend your spine. As you exhale, begin to hinge forward for that wide leg forward fold. Placing your palms underneath your shoulders for a neutral spine. And then we're gonna place the left palm underneath our nose. As you inhale, begin to reach your right arm up towards the ceiling for your twist. And think about your intentions as you exhale, releasing any limiting beliefs. And then exhale to unwind, placing your right palm underneath your nose. On the inhale, begin to reach your left arm up towards the sky for your twist, releasing and letting go of any limiting thoughts or beliefs. Exhale to unwind and start to reach your arms out long in front of you for downward facing dog arms to get a nice back extension. Maybe creating a slight bend to your knees so that you can release your back. Then coming back through the other side, reaching underneath your arms towards your feet and releasing your head down. This is gonna give you a gentle inversion.
The next place in your palms, underneath your shoulders for your neutral spine. As we prepare to stand, placing your hands on your hips as you come up to standing. As you exhale, hopping your legs together. And we're gonna come down towards the mat in a Malasana squat. Into that earth connection. And then gently coming down onto your sits bones and extending your feet out in front of you. Maybe pulling the flesh out from underneath. We're gonna come into a forward fold, inhaling your arms overhead. As you exhale, begin to hinge forward. Think of the inhales as extension and the exhales as reaching. And when you have as much reach as you can get, you can start to fold over. And then inhaling up. We're gonna to start to come into boat pose from here. So rocking back onto your sits bones, extending your legs out in front of you and you're ready. You can either release your arms or you can keep the connection. Whatever route you're choosing, using your breath to anchor through your core. Exhaling, coming into your butterfly for resting. We're gonna come into boat pose one more time. When you're ready, coming back onto your sits bones, extending your legs out in front of you. Finding your breath to stabilize your core. And then exhale to release the Baddha Konasana or butterfly pose. Maybe giving yourself a foot massage. We're gonna start to lower down onto our backs one vertebrae at a time, keeping your knees bent. See if you can use your core to look slowly lower. And start to windshield wiper your knees back and forth, rocking side to side. And stopping at one side to breathe. And then coming back through to the other side. And come to start to hug your knees in towards your chest. Be rocking side to side to give yourself a low back massage. And then bring your knees to a 90 degree and place your right ankle over your left knee in a figure four and start to reach through the underside of your knee or your thigh to create a little resistance. And this is going to give you a stretch to the right hip socket. And exhale to unwind, coming back into your 90 degree, 
and place your left ankle over your right knee for a figure four on the other side and start to reach your hands through to the underside of your knee or your thigh to create that resistance. Breathing through your left hip socket. Using your breath. Releasing emotions through your hips. And then exhale to release and hugging your knees in towards your chest. Maybe ha finding a happy baby pose. We're gonna start to transition into our final relaxation pose. So if there's anything else that you need to complete your practice, go ahead and take that now, taking what you need. And when you're ready, coming into your final relaxation pose, Shavasana. This is where the important work of rest. We're at a cellular level, your body's intelligence knows what it needs to reset, regenerate and renew. The only active job you have is seeing what you can release just a little more as you let go and let your body take over and do its work. Just allowing yourself to drift. Seeing what you can let go of just a little more with each exhale. Seeing if you can progressively relax. With each exhale. Letting go just a little more. And just allowing and receiving.
Om Bhavavava Swa Tatsa Veta Vanehiyam Bhagodi Vasya Dimahi Diyo Yo Pachaudayat Starting to find some small movements as you begin your transition. Maybe wiggling your fingers and your toes. Finding some stretches. And as you feel called, find your way to seated position. Placing your palms at your heart center and thanking yourself for bringing yourself to the mat this morning as you make time for your personal practice. You're filling your cup. You're creating that ritual of self-care so that that energy can pour outward in a renewed and regenerated way. And aligning with those intentions that you're setting for yourself for the year to come Remember to be kind and patient and compassionate with yourself. As you're dealing with belief systems of what you think is possible and what, what might be holding you back, come back to your breath and your intention as you move forward. The teacher in me honors and sees the teacher in you. Thank you. <laughs> 